live from Town Square Towers at the heart of the Jersey Shore. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Get up, get out, do something. Join the conversation, 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. It is now 634. It is February 12th. It is, wow, 16 degrees. Feels like eight. That's cold. Getting up to 28 degrees here at WOBM AM 1160 and 1310 News Talk Radio. We are streaming live at WOBMAM.com and on the Radio Papa app, 732-505-1160. In the studio with me, Ken Malgier. And of course... Um, as soon as he gets in the studio here, uh, Sean from Sean and Sue, Zach's dad, is messing with me in the window. There are popsicle stick puppets, uh, and uh, and it's good that I have now a witness who can actually share that with me. Good morning, Kenny. Good morning, Jerry. We'd have it no other way <laughs> right, here at WOBMA. Right. I just want them all. I want some. Now, now I don't feel crazy. It's not like it's just me seeing things in my window. You saw that, right? I did. Okay, good. <laughs> So, Kenny, uh, why don't you tell the listening audience, uh, you know, about your business? Obviously, you are a, a young entrepreneur here in Ocean County, uh, a mover and a shaker, by the way. That's what they say. That's yes. what they say. What they say. Uh, yes, happy to be here. I am a young entrepreneur. Uh Own Narcissus Florals now for 11 years, took over family business. We are a wedding event and everyday florist right here in Tom's River, New Jersey. Uh, Studio happens to be here in Tom's River, New Jersey. But uh, we are a florist that serves Ocean and Monmouth County daily. Daily deliveries up and down the Jersey Shore and all of New Jersey for weddings and events. Really great business to be in. (laughs) Business is blooming. Business is blooming. So... So thank you for joining us this morning. I know that you're uh, there's not much going on for you this week. No, no, slow week, slow yeah, week, slow nothing week. going on at all. Slow week, uh, you know, just kind of just kind of biding your time till the next holiday. That's uh, right. You guys get busy for Valentine's Day, I imagine. Just a little bit. Yeah. We is, do, we do get very busy for Valentine's Day. It is uh, Zach. It is definitely a male-driven holiday uh, for the ladies in their lives. Though we do certainly have a few ladies uh, who do come in and buy their significant others flowers for the holiday. Okay. Is this so? So where does this rank on the list of holidays? I mean, I, I would say, you know, if I were just off the top of my head. I would think Mother's Day. I would think like Easter, you do a lot of flowers. I would think Arbor Day. Yeah, Arbor Day is definitely up there. No, Ar- Arbor Day is <laughs> well below Valentine's Day. Uh, in the hierarchy, you're absolutely correct. Mother's Day does definitely take the cake, uh, but Valentine's Day is right there after. So Valentine's Day is a really wonderful holiday to show your love, show your expression of love through flowers, of course. Uh, but not least of all, it's a holiday that, especially when it falls on a weekend, uh, you get some great street cred out of sending your significant other flowers through throughout the upcoming week before the holiday, which we saw a lot of this year, and certainly we're in for a very busy day today with a lot of ladies receiving some gifts at work. So what you're saying is that the smart money, the smart men, let's call them men for the time being, the smart men, uh, Zach, are buying their women flowers up to, like, like up to and including Valentine's Day. Absolutely. There is no quicker way to a woman's heart than through a jealous coworker. <laughs> so it's it's like a it's like a flower runway. It's a bonanza. It it's, it's a, a bonanza. flower bonanza. It's unbelievable. So, uh Kenny, uh talk to us, you know, I know that you uh you are uh certainly a college graduate. You are you were a uh, I think you actually you actually started a club at Fairleigh Dickinson. I mean, I know that you were I started a few clubs yeah, at Fairleigh yeah, Dickinson. Yeah, started a few I have clubs. That notoriety. Yeah. I, I started actually uh, founded the Young Republicans with John Baldino. He's uh, very active in the party in North Jersey, actually to to this day. Um, also, the Italian American uh, Club at Fairleigh Dickinson. Fairleigh Dickinson actually has the honor of being the first university uh, in the United States founded by an Italian American, Peter San Martino, brilliant man with a great vision after the GI Bill was passed uh, following World War II. Uh, interestingly enough, it was one of the few universities that did not have an Italian American heritage club. Uh, so when I was there, I thought that that would just be a fitting tribute to his legacy. 
as a wonderful leader and president and visionary, uh, serving actually as the longest president of the university. And the gentleman that was there whilst I was a student, Michael Adams, who I became a very good friend of, late president of Fairleigh Dickinson University, second longest serving president, who uh, continued that tradition of Peter San Martino. So, okay, so so walk me through this, all right? Because listen, I, I I'm very I'm very clear with everyone. I I did not make it through college. I right. was in the square root club. I've never held that against you. Uh, no, I appreciate. I love that. you just the I, same. I appreciate that. But, but you, you conversely went through, had a very successful college career. Now I know that your family was in, you know, the floral business. They were. Was there ever a moment in the evolution of Kenny that you said, "I'm going to do something different"? Every moment of every day. <laughs> <laughs> so what was on? What what were the competing possibilities? Well, I, I, when I was graduated from college, 2005, that's when I uh, took over the family business. But the the competing possibility was I was always going to go to law school. That was really? that was that was always the dream. So um, I I married a lawyer instead, which I felt I definitely win. Uh, right. That was a, that was a solid win in my book. Um, my mother always told me marry a doctor or a lawyer. She probably should have been gender specific, but. <laughs> I couldn't be happier that I met and fell in love with my husband, and uh, he's a wonderful guy. Actually, uh, managing partner of his law firm uh, right here in Tom's River. But uh, yeah, and we won't mention that, by the way. That's a uh, um, that the law firm that he's the managing partner of is uh, may may be a sponsor of this program, a sponsor of this program, and a uh, and a uh, and a, a very decidedly kind of democratic type law firm. I'm right, just I don't that. hold that against them. No. Uh, I am. There are actually gay Republicans. I happen to be one of them. We're, we're not like uh, white rhinos. There, there's more than just two <laughs> wow. in the wild. Uh, but we uh, we, we are a, a strange lot. And uh, and Jonathan does happen to be a Democrat. Yeah. Okay. So so there must be some uh, some interesting discussions uh, at home. Uh, you know, in that way. So so. So does he feel the burn at this point? Oh, he's feeling the burn. He's yeah. feeling the burn. He's uh, I I can't be- I may have to move out, but he's feeling <laughs> the burn. Our dog is feeling the burn. Everybody's uh, feeling the burn, but me. Yeah. yeah. So so what do you think? I mean, are you are you uh, are you a Trump supporter? Are you? Uh... No, I'm a, I'm a Kas- I'm a solid Kasich fan. Yeah. I, I am squarely in in the Kasich ring. Um, I I think that he has the vision. And the experience to solve a lot of the budget issues that that we have as a nation, um, I think that there's there's a lot of momentum for all all of the outside candidates, and I'm glad that they're bringing a lot of wonderful issues to the table. But uh, but I I'm definitely leaning Kasich at at this point uh, heavy. Okay, so so you you're not a fan necessarily of the redistribution of all wealth and assets among each of God's creations equally. Uh, I I have to say I'm not okay because you, I guess you you feel like you work hard for what what you know definitely work hard yeah. I, I believe in in an honest day's work for an honest day's pay and uh, and I and I definitely believe that there are some really wrong ways to do it and and I happen to believe that Bernie Sanders is unequivocally wrong okay so if you're cu- if you're curious about Kenny's uh, uh, stance on things then uh, you know. I'll try to help decipher what he's saying because he's very it's it it can be unclear at times. Uh, Ken Malgier, Narcissus Flowers. When we come back, uh, I would like to talk because you are very active in the local chamber of commerce, among other organizations. Sure, but I would like to kind of get your feel on uh, maybe minimum wage and uh, and what that means. Uh, would love to comment. Oh, on Oh, that's it. good time. So when we come back right after this, Ken Malgier. Get more Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin at our website, WOBMAM.com. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Welcome back. Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin, February 12th, 648, 16 degrees, heading all the way up to a balmy 28. Beautiful Valentine's Day weekend here, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310 at the Town Square Media Towers overlooking the Toms River. God, what a beautiful view. We are streaming live at WOBMAM.com and on the Radio Pup app, 732-505-1160. I say what a beautiful view, and Kenny... There is no view. Yeah, because... There is no view. Because I'm looking at one view. I I could see Kenny. I could see Zach. I could see a, uh, a, a, you know, some horizontal blinds, and then there's a lot of wall. Uh, So the view, yeah, not so much, but, you know... It's a the walk-in was nice. The walk-in yeah, it's was a nice, nice walk, yeah. right? It's very, uh, it's nice. You can smell the Uncle Dudes in the air. It's beautiful. Yeah, you can, the smell of 
Or oh, their even... Valentine donuts. Yes. Oh, what's That's better great. than that? Uh, I didn't take down the statistics of donut sales for uh, for Valentine's Day. They're just a little short of what the flower sales are. So I did want to say, Kenny, before we get too far, I, I, I hope that the listeners are understanding now why I have not had you on the show here too far. It is clear. It is clear that uh, you uh, you are a superior radio personality, and I'm I'm a little hardly, bit hardly I'm Jerry. a little bit frightened that uh, when I go away and uh, you take over the show for a day here and a day there, that that the calls the next day when I rejoin the show will be uh, will be for the return of Kenny. I'm here for you as long as we're not away together. Uh, <laughs> I will be able to fill in whenever you need me. Oh, that's great. That's great. I just I'm just scared of. I'm honestly scared of uh, some of the older folks with pitchforks coming down to the station saying, bring we Kenny want more back. Kenny. We yeah. want more Kenny. Yeah. yeah. That happens. Yeah. That happens. I, I, I have no doubt. So, Kenny, we were talking uh, minimum wage uh, when we were about to uh, to hit the break. Uh, so it is, uh, it's been kind of proposed in the uh, in state assembly uh, that we raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Right. So why don't you talk, you know, you as a, as a, as an employer, as uh, somebody who's tuned in to a lot of local business uh, networks here in town, uh, what, what's your opinion of, of that kind of a drastic move? Well, it, I think you hit the nail on the head there, Jer. Uh, it is drastic, and and quite specifically, it's 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 I believe a misstep misstep on on many levels. Not least of all, uh, a minimum wage at fifteen dollars an hour definitely takes off the table any entry level jobs. You're you're speaking now of of young men and women uh, under eighteen years old, often who are getting their first jobs as a small business owner. I cannot imagine a time, or I, I guess maybe twenty years from now would be a time, but certainly not in the near future where someone would would legitimately earn $15 an hour to on their first job to stand at a booth on the boardwalk or sweep the floor of a flower shop. Um, it, it absolutely is wrong because what that will force on small business owners is, is a wage increase across the board, something that would be crippling, something that we as a small business community have never seen before. You're talking about people who are presently earners at a living wage. Now, I'm not saying that, that under $15 is by any means a living wage, but there are people who are making more than $15 an hour that are still hourly employees, and I might add that almost all of my employees make more than $15 an hour, um, and that isn't on purpose. That is not an accident. I, I happen to believe that. And I believe that the free market works perfectly for that, to achieve that goal. Um, there are a lot more people that are working positively in the free market that, than there are that need to be told how much to pay their their employees. So you, we have all of these employees who are earning more than that, and rightfully so, that will be clamoring for a pay increase as soon as they find out that the gentleman who happens to be sweeping the floor is now making $15 an hour. The, there, there's really just a awful sense that that I have that all of these free things that that many of our friends on the left are are promoting are going to obviously come from this huge payroll tax increase. So there's no wonder why everything in their in their platform can be free. People are wondering where the money's coming from. Well, that's exactly where the money's going right. to come from. It's going to come from $15 an hour plus employees now paying into a system um, that's going to create just an o another over bloated tax for our government to waste. Right. Well, and I think that's, uh, you know, again, so I, I know that, look, there's a reason that you and I are friends. Uh, we, uh, you know, we, <laughs> we, we definitely see eye to eye here um, and, uh, and, and on a number of issues. And I think you know, you can probably point to some of the ramifications of Obamacare right. um, that have already taken a, uh, a toll on small and mid-sized businesses and large businesses, for that matter, um, that have that has forced forced um, unnatural decisions to be made around the workforce. That's right. Um, because at the end of the day, you're not increasing profit margins. Never. You know, no, <laughs> no. That, that's not how you increase a profit margin for sure. Right. At the end of the day, you're just going to have hardworking people working twice as hard because they're going to be now filling the void because a business owner is no longer going to be able to fill that with your first-time employees. Absolutely. So, uh, so listen, so that's a, that's a great point. And, you know, and I do not have a degree in economics. No, listen, but I can tell you that much. It does not take a degree in economics to uh, to do the math. It does not take an abacus, right? It does not. 
It does not take. Uh, it does. You don't have to be a and here, Mensa here's, member. Here's one thing that, that I, was, I was actually having this 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 debate. You know, it's not going to take long before those who are doing the less than fifteen dollar an hour tasks until those entrepreneurs find a way to mechanize a system, right, to pay for those jobs to be done, right. So, in other words, ultimately, it'll it'll lead to jobs being cut. It'll it'll lead to one hundred percent. It'll lead to uh, companies figuring out how to not hire people to do jobs that can be done cheaper, uh, some some other way. And one more point on this, and, and I was actually I was it was funny because it wasn't well received, but I I do feel that on, for, on a scary note, if we think that we have a drug problem now, in this country. Wait till you start paying 16, 17, and 18-year-olds $15 an hour. Wait till they start having that kind of disposable income and nowhere else to spend it. These students and young people still live at home. Right. So wait till you, you think we have a problem now. Wait till they can actually afford the drugs. <laughs> So uh, just to review the uh, the the uh, opinions expressed by Kenny here on the Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin show, when Jeremy's in the uh, the seat on this side, don't necessarily reflect the views of Jeremy Grunin. But that's a great point, Kenny. I agree with you 100%. Uh, and uh, I do agree that we have a drug problem. I do agree that giving more disposable income to kids that are working 8, 10 hours a week at, at, at McDonald's, right, and now suddenly bringing home a bigger paycheck, where does that money go? And again, I just... My my biggest fear. They're probably overall, not going to be buying flowers. Well, they're not going to be buying flowers. But my biggest fear. That's true. My biggest fear is that those kids won't actually have jobs because they're going right. to eliminate those positions right. because they just can't afford to pay them, and they're going to figure out how to make those other folks that are having to be paid the fifteen dollars an hour just take on that workload. Right. So it's uh, it ultimately it's not going to help our unemployment rate. It's not going to help. Um, it's not going to you know. It's not going to help the working poor. Uh, it is just going to make a system that uh, won't work uh, at a higher level than it already doesn't work. Uh, so great point. Kenny, when we get back after the break, I want to switch gears a little bit because you are um, you give back at such a high level to our community through your business, but also through your time. Uh, I want to talk about that because this is Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin. It's about getting up, getting out, and doing something. And uh, you are a shining example of that. So oh, thanks for saying so. Absolutely. Kenny Malagier, uh Narcissus Flowers, uh, and again, the ambassador of love here in Ocean County. That's his new nickname for me. Uh, we'll be back after this. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Coming up next, the latest from WOBM News, the Town Square, New Jersey News Network, and Fox News Radio. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Live from the Jersey Shore to the world, get up, get out, do something. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Take the show wherever you go. Download the free Radio Pub app for your smartphone or tablet. Join the conversation, 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Welcome back to Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin. February 12th, 708, 16 degrees, heading up to 28 at WOBM AM 1160 and 1310 News Talk Radio. Streaming live on the Radio Pop app and at WOBMAM.com. You can join the conversation at 732-505-1160. We are talking to Ken Malgier from Narcissus Flowers. Uh, and Kenny... Uh, Very happy I, to be here. Uh, you should be, but I, you know, you were... You know, the beauty of social media... The lines are lighting up the, already. The beauty of social media, text messages... Uh, we have other radio personalities stopping in the studio to a say a pile of stuff yes, already was, piling up was, outside yes. the door. Uh, yeah, not 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 overwhelmingly positive response to your uh, equation that says that a higher minimum wage will ultimately result in youngsters doing more drugs. Right. That was a little bit of a right. leap. I won't redact the statement, but I will I will say maybe it was a little bit of right. a leap. It was a Trump-esque moment. Yes, it I, was. I was perhaps getting carried away, <laughs> but um, but it's, uh, it's, it's a very serious issue in all seriousness, right. well, and it's something that the whole business community needs to stand up and, and take note of. Yeah, no, it's a good point, and I just, I just uh, you know, I just want to remind you that every one of our interviews is uh, is recorded. 
uh, will be on YouTube in perpetuity. And uh, if you'd like to hear Kenny's rant about uh, minimum wage and uh, our drug problems, feel free to go to our YouTube channel at WOBM AM. And uh, you can or pull stop that by up. Narcissus today right. where it will be on a loop, I'm sure. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's put that aside and let's get to, you know, let, let's make people forget about that because. Uh, I think when they hear about all the positive things you're involved in in uh, in Ocean County, they are going to forget all about that drug thing, and they're going to focus only on the positives of Kenny and uh, and and how he gives back. So, Kenny, can you tell us what are some of the things that you're doing locally? Uh, to give back to our community. Well, thanks, Jerry. It's not just me, of course. It's the whole team at Narcissus. We we try to do our, our very best to giving back and giving to those who, who allow us to be a successful business right here at the Jersey Shore. But most specifically, uh, very involved in the chamber. Uh, I'm your vice chair, as a matter of fact, of the Greater Tom's River Chamber of Commerce. And that is a very active group. Um, also the vice chair of the Ocean County College Foundation. And uh, that is a wonderful organization that gives scholarship funds. Last year alone, over six hundred thousand dollars to our most deserving students in our community where at ocean county college you can receive of course not only your two-year degree uh, but there are five courses of study where you can actually stay right here in ocean county and receive your four-year degree from the cane at ocean partnership so uh, that's a wonderful wonderful place if you haven't been on campus in a while it is certainly a place to check out the brand new student center the john and judy larson student center just opened a few short weeks ago and it is a remarkable space, absolutely filled with light, beautiful space for the student organizations to get together and meet. And as a matter of fact, it will be the location of this year's college gala, which will be held on Saturday, June the 11th, which I have the pleasure of co-hosting with Victoria Magley Kane of Investors Bank. So the other organization that takes most of my time and treasure is the Garden State Philharmonic that is, of course, an all-professional orchestra right here on the New Jersey Shore. We perform at the historic Strand Theater and also at the Jay and Linda Grunin Center for the Arts on the campus of Ocean County College and throughout the state of New Jersey for special events. We partner with the Atlantic City Ballet and uh, Belleville School District on the other side of New Jersey. Um, Really a wonderful organization. We boast three youth orchestras as well as a community chorus. And there are events every month of the year for the Garden State Philharmonic, not just fundraisers and friend raisers, but our performances. So uh, it's a great organization to be involved with. There's uh, numerous other groups. And of course, I mentioned Fairleigh Dickinson at the top of the hour, uh, very involved still at uh, Fairleigh Dickinson and also for our campus in England, Roxton College, where I was fortunate to spend some time in 2003. So there's a lot of things that keep me busy, not only here, but also in North Jersey. And I'm happy that I can give back the way that we do. So, Kenny, uh, how old are you? 32. 32. So, Kenny, why is it or how is it that you, at 32 years old, are so engaged in our community, are so committed? Um, and why is it that we don't seem to ha see that same kind of mobilization, that same kind of um, yearn to give back in the rest of you know, in, in so many other of our younger folks here in, in Ocean and Monmouth County. Oh, I, I, I can't answer for, for everyone else. I will say that I think that the opportunities are there for everyone to get involved, but uh, perhaps the right opportunity hasn't hit the right people at the right times. Um, for, for, for me, it's just always been a desire. Um, my grandparents actually um, had a, a huge influence on me in terms of involvement. I mean, there wasn't a Sunday in Bergen County area uh, where we would go up and, and visit visit them and they may not even have been home yet at one or two o'clock in the afternoon because they were out shaking the can for some organization or on a picket line somewhere uh, protesting one thing or another. Uh, but uh, they were an extraordinary couple. They were uh, always involved and thankfully that rubbed off on me. I think that young people really take their cues from their parents or grandparents or their surroundings and that's why it's so important uh, if you're a parent or a grandparent for you to lead by example and to get out there and do something um, because the young people will see it, they will emulate it, it will happen, and that is how we make change and positive change in our community because I, I believe, as many do, uh, and I'm thankful for that, that the positive change comes from the people. We can't sit back and, and wait for a government agency to do something. We need to, to do it. It happens better when, when individuals and organizations and charitable partners take control of things that they want to see changed and they do it from a grassroots 
grassroots level, and they do it very specifically for uh, change that they would like to see in our community. So just thinking about this, I guess I'd never really given it that much thought, but as the first vice chair of the Ocean County College Foundation. Where are you going with this one? Uh, and as the first vice chair of the Greater Toms River Chamber of Commerce. Now, I, you know, you there, know, there it, will be some overlap. I'm not a mathlete, right. right? I am. I am not necessarily the sharpest tool in the shed, but I'm fairly certain that that puts you in line to be the president of both of those organizations simultaneously. There will be some overlap. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So so. So your time. So the designers will, will be making overtime at Narcissus <laughs> Florals. They can bank on that for about a year and a half. Wow, that is going to be uh, that's going to be crazy. Um, but you know what? Crazy good because I think uh, obviously you're an incredibly talented guy here in town, and uh, having your ability to uh, to lead such great organizations as those, um, and you know, following such great in such great leaders' footsteps in those organizations. Oh yeah, you know, absolutely. first and foremost, uh, Ginny Haynes, who is the current. Uh, the current chair of the Ocean County College Foundation, our newest freeholder. Mm -hmm. uh, so you would be uh, following in her footsteps. And then, of course... Great leader. Uh, yeah, then, of course, at the Greater Tubbs River Chamber, uh, the current chair is a rock star. So, I mean, following in his footsteps... I mean, footsteps, he is out of sight. Out of, out sight, of sight. Out of sight. In, so, fact, in fact, we look so similar, people may not even notice a change. Right. They may not notice... They're, that there was a sea change there. Right. They Absolutely. may not no. notice that when you take over for me, it's going right. to be just a seamless transition and... Uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I will. I put will. a little hair on your head, and and you're just you're me all the way. Wow, wow. Yeah. Well, Kenny, when we come back, I'm gonna let the hair comment go. You, there's always got to be a zinger from you on every segment where we have to leave the uh, we have to leave the listeners um, wanting. So we're gonna ask you, Kenny, because we're gonna give you the magic wand. Okay, we're gonna give you the fairy the dust. dreaded magic wand. We're gonna give yes. you the pixie dust, whatever you want to call. You're gonna shake your nose, whatever you want to do. But there's one thing in this county that you can change, that you can impact just by waving your hand. And we want to know what that is that you would do after the break. This is a teaser, Kenny. Take note. Oh. Be right back. Stay tuned for Preferred Company with Joel Markell and Marianne Levy at 8. Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin continues next. News Talk Radio, WOBM, AM 1160 and 1310. Connect with Jeremy, 732-505-1160. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160, 1310, and WOBMAM.com. February 12th, 721, 16 degrees, heading up to 28 today. WOBM AM 1160, 1310 News Talk Radio, streaming live on the Radio Pup app and at WOBMAM.com. You can join the conversation at 732-505-1160. We are here with Ken Malgier. He is the owner, operator, rock star at Narcissus Flowers here in Ocean County. The ambassador of love. Yeah. Yes. Zach, I, I know that uh, I know you're scared to take phone calls for Kenny, but just so you know, all the phone lines are locked, it looks like. I got them open now. Oh, okay. good. <laughs> Were they blocked the whole time? No. Oh, no. good. Okay. That was just for that was just for because we wanted to effect. after Kenny made that comment, we're like, let's just let's be careful. Just yeah. All right, yeah. so that's a good call. So hey, listen, Kenny, so we talked to you about your magic wand and right. uh, and you're waving it around and you can impact a couple things. I know that you may have wanted to uh, to do something economically uh, from a business standpoint, but also maybe something socially. So sure. what do you got? Uh, just two things. Uh, three things, if I include the first, which is thank you for running a Pro Flowers ad as our lead in. <laughs> uh, wonderful. That would be no my problem. first magic wand no is problem. to make those types of ads go away. But remember, Narcissus Florals in the Seacourt Pavilion, 732-281. <laughs> 0333. Uh, but uh, my magic wand for our business specifically, uh, it's kind of funny. I would actually, um, if I had my way, allow people to have fresh flowers in their homes every day. Uh, I believe that this only elevates the floral artistry as a business professionally. Um, having fresh flowers in your home on a daily basis is a beautiful thing. Um, it, it actually is scientifically proven to elevate one's mood um, and bring more joy to your life and fights depression. So that's a wonderful thing. But more specifically, when you have a, an occasion in your life, whether it's uh, you're grieving from bereavement or a 
uh, or you have an opportunity to have a wonderful occasion such as a wedding, it makes having a professional florist, a floral artist, that much more relevant when you're used to having those beautiful things around you. So that would be one magic wand thing is to make it affordable and available for everyone to enjoy that on a daily basis and then to appreciate their professional artists when they need them most. Um, but my second would be, in all seriousness, uh, for our community, and, and I know we, we joked about it, uh, but it is a very serious issue. The, the drug issue in our community is, is an enormous issue, and it's a big issue across the country, and it, and it is on my mind often. This week, we were fortunate enough at Narcissus Florals to receive an award from the prosecutor's office for our contributions to Tina's House, um, which is for uh, sexually abused uh, youth and, and actually all people in our community. Uh, where they can go for for treatment and uh, and screenings and and it really is constantly on our officials' minds the drug problem and the and the pro- and awareness in in our community and it would just uh, be I would be remiss if I didn't bring it up as something that I would would want instantly ch- uh, changed. We unfortunately see it so often at Narcissus in terms of bereavement work. We see the family's pain. We see when they come in and they're doing. Uh, funeral flowers for 28, 26, and 30-year-olds. Um, and the, the pain, uh, there is nothing that can take it away. There's nothing that can comfort people um, that are going through that. So that would certainly be something that I would, I would want changed. Awesome. So, and you know, you, you, you touched on it, but uh, Kenny and his team at Narcissus were recognized uh, by uh, Ocean County Prosecutor Coronado the other day um, for the work that they have done with uh, Tina's House which is uh, part of the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office. It is their sex crimes unit. It's basically, um, unfortunately, uh, a a facility that exists to uh, engage children and others who have been um, molested or have been improperly dealt with uh, and to kind of get get them to speak openly and honestly about what they've dealt with. And Kenny— And unfortunately, uh, it's a very busy center. It is a very busy center. And Kenny and his team have— you know, like clockwork, brought flowers to uh, to that facility every week um, to you know to brighten up what is a, otherwise just a, a obviously a horrific uh, type you know right. situation. And so, uh, and that's the kind of thing that goes unnoticed. It's not it's not in the papers. It's not out there. It's not something that they're doing for glamour or that Kenny's doing for any kind of thing other than the fact that it's the right thing to do and it's supporting our community in a big way. And Kenny, that's why I love you. I'd like a brother. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure um, to be here. You are awesome, and you're doing so much for our community. Uh, and you're you know, you're going to be hosting the show. So uh, listen. Twice this month. Listen, I'm excited about that. Uh, Narcissus Flowers, don't forget to get out and, uh, and take care of your significant other this weekend. Uh, we'll be back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin after the break. Don't forget Dana Lancelotti coming on at 745 to tell us what to do this weekend.